In this video, we are going to start writing the basic code to drive our LED matrix. If all goes to plan, we should be able to control the LEDs in one column of the matrix. I'll name the file ledmatrix.py, as that seems like a reasonably logical name. Whenever we are dealing with GPIO pins, the first thing we should do is import the GPIO module. Next, we need to decide how we will make reference to the GPIO pins using set mode. I like to use gpio.board, which assigns each pin a number from 1 to 26. Now, it will be helpful to set up some variables. We have three pins for cathodes, so let's make a variable for each one of these. So here I'm using pin 7, 11, and 15 for my cathodes. Now, for each of these, I need to set the pin as an output and then assign it a value. So here I have set each of the cathode pins to be output pins starting at zero, which represents off or zero volts. This works, but it's a lot of code for simply turning on some pins, especially since these code blocks seem similar to one another. In programming, when something seems too repetitive, there's likely a better way to write the code. First off, we could use a simple array to hold all three values. We can now get rid of our three cathode variables and then change our code accordingly. Still, we have a lot that looks like it's repeated here. We can see that the only thing that separates these three code blocks is 0, 1, and 2, but in all other ways, they're exactly the same, these lines of code. We can further simplify things by using a for loop. Here I'm saying take each cathode in our array cathodes. That is, this cathode will take on the values 7, 11, and 15. And it will go through then three times, one for each cathode. So for the first one, 7, it will place that variable here. So it will set up cathode at pin 7 as a GPIO pin out. And then the output value for 7 will be 0. Once it's finished that, it moves on to the second cathode in cathodes, which is 11. And so it will set 11 as an output pin and then set that 11 pin to 0. And then, of course, lastly for pin 15. That means we don't need any of this anymore. We can do everything with just our array and our simple for loop. Now that we've finished with our cathodes, we do the same thing with our anodes. We first start with an array called anodes, which will hold the pin numbers for the three anodes. Then next for each of those anodes, we set them as output pins. And then after that, we set them to off, that is zero volts. Okay, so now we have all our pins set up. Let's do something with them. Now we said before that when we're using our LED matrix that we need to turn one anode on at a time. So let's start with that. Let's turn on one of our anodes. So far, all three of them are off. Be careful here to use anodes and not just simply anode because we're talking about the array anodes. Next, we have to decide what we're going to do with our cathodes. Right now, they're all set to zero. That means they'll all turn on because there'll be a potential difference across each anode to cathode. It's only when we turn one of these cathodes to on that the LED along that row won't light. So how about let's try turning one of those off. How about we can turn off the middle one, the one at pin 11. Okay, so with this code, we should expect to get two LEDs on and those two should be in the same column. Now, whenever we deal with GPIO pins, it's important to include a GPIO.cleanup statement. That just makes sure that all the GPIO pins are reset at the end of this program. Now there's one other thing we have to deal with. This is a very quick program, so we won't actually get to see this LED light. So we should put in some time delay. The first thing we should do is import time. Once we import time, we can then use the sleep command. And in particular, we'd like to have our sleep command after we turned on our LED. And here I've set it to two, that is two seconds. So I should see two LEDs turn on for two seconds in this case. Okay, let's give it a try. Okay, we're back looking at the wiring of our LED matrix and I've added a little bit more in here. You can see a couple of connectors and that's connected to this, which is a digital multimeter set as an ammeter right now. I wanna see how much current is going through my anode and I already said that I only wanted at most 12 milliamps if all three turn on. So in this case we set two to turn on so I'm expecting to get at most eight milliamps but we'll see what we get. First let's just see if they light. Okay so I'd call that a success and notice that those were yellow LEDs. I've actually made 
two of these matrices, one red and one yellow. So sometimes you'll see one, sometimes you'll see the other. Now the question is, what does it look like in terms of current? How much current is running through those? Is it too much? Run it one more time. And there we have it, something that is reasonable. Like I said, 8 is really the most I wanted, so certainly we're not running risk of damaging our Raspberry Pi here. Okay, so we can control one of our anodes now, one of our columns. Next step is to control each one of those anodes, all three of them, and then to loop through them, which shouldn't be too challenging.